Hey, what's poppin' everyone? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can master the behavioral portion of your interview. Woo! So I'll give you tips and tricks on how you can improve your interview game, and more specifically, relating to behavioral questions and in the behavioral department. So what does behavioral really mean? It's like how you interact with other people. Are you going to murder them? Are you a good person? Are you a jerk? So this is kind of different from my um, most recent videos because I've been talking a lot about AWS certifications recently. And AWS certifications are great for interviews because they show that you can get something done, you can sit down for a bit to get something done. But there's also other portions of interviews like um, the behavioral questions, like kind of questions like, why do you want to work here or something like that. And it is my belief that you can get these questions down to a science. And of course, there's not like a right or wrong answer, at least most of the time. I mean, there are like some kind of like bad answers, but that doesn't mean it's like wrong to say like that's an answer or something like that. So I guess the idea is that there's more things that can get, help you get a job than just AWS certifications, and I'm here to start with that. All right, before I begin, though, make sure to triple click that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It'll help me a lot. I put a lot of effort into researching all this. Thanks. So many larger companies think like Amazon, Google, they have behavioral questions. And they test if you're a good fit for the company, a good fit for the team, and if you can mesh well together. So for example, Amazon tests you on their 14 leadership principles. Google tests you on their on your Googliness. This is really to see if you're a jerk or not. And many other companies will test you kind of to see not only on your technical prowess, but on your behavioral prowess. I like that word prowess. So you might be thinking, huh, what kind of questions would they ask? to check to see if you're a good fit for the team or the company. And of course, it really depends from company to company. One thing I would do, I would look up the company and see if they have any like core principles that they like support, like that we support kindness, leadership, or something like that. I would look those up, try to like fit a story to yourself, like embrace that principle like it's your own. They just want to see if that you're a good, like a person that they want, they would want to have a barbecue with. Like that's really the end result of a of, um, a interview to see if you're you're good enough to be have if you have the skills first of all. But that's that's something unrelated. But then that you're like a good enough person that they the team and the interviewer would want to have a barbecue with you or maybe have a drink or something like that. So they might ask you questions like, "What is your greatest weakness?" That's like a very common one and a, a question or an answer I've seen a lot. And I used to think was the like a cool answer was like, oh, it's, I'm a perfectionist. And I've learned that that isn't really a good answer anymore because everyone says like something like that. They'll say something about themselves that is actually not a weakness when in reality it's kind of like a strength. Like being a perfectionist is kind of important if you want to work at like a large company because everyone <laughs> wants to do their best work and you kind of need to be a perfectionist to make sure you keep trying to perfect yourself and learn more and stuff like that. So it doesn't really say much about yourself as well. It's kind of like hiding your cards. Nobody wants to play against the person in poker that's hiding their cards. I guess that's not how poker works, but I'm not a poker master. So it also, it's not really a weakness saying that you're perfectionist. That's kind of like the end, end result. You want to actually say a weakness and sell them Maybe think of a time that you messed up. And this is where preparation comes in. You need to have these things prepared before the interview. Like prepare all the times you've messed up, write them down, memorize them, put save them in front of a mirror. It's all that kind of stuff. You need to practice because practice makes perfect. And if no one's perfect, why practice? Oh, wait, wait, don't do that part. So you will, you want to say your like mistake and say how you messed up or like what your weakness is. But I w you would also want to say how you reclaim yourself from it. That's, that's the most important part. Telling the truth, they want to see that you're genuine. You want to be genuine. Otherwise, they don't want to just hire a robot that is just like memorize these answers online from some YouTube video they saw and, <laughs> and then uh, went into the interview and just like spat it to them like a robot. They, c they can tell when you're being genuine or not, at least a good interviewer will. So you want to reclaim how you learn from your mistakes and then be genuine. Like, because if you don't learn anything from your mistakes, then it's kind of like shows a negative thing to the interviewer. And you don't want to ever be negative because then they'll think, oh, this other person was uh, had more energy and was more positive. So I'll hire the other person, which is better. So another common question that many companies will ask is, why do you want to work for this company? 
And yeah, you might have say a question. Like you might say, yeah, I really enjoy what this company does, but they can they can tell when you're lying. And most people want to work, and because they want to eat, they want food on the table. There's nothing wrong with saying, yeah, I would like to work for this company because I would like to have money. But you also want to say something else, like、um, explain what what you can do for the company as well. Instead of what the company can do for you, maybe you want to say like, "Ah,、oh, I really like this your company's machine learning algorithms, so I want, <laughs> so I want to improve upon them or something like that." I don't know. So another one common way of answering these kind of behavioral questions is to use the STAR method. And if you do not know what the STAR method is, it stands for situation is the S, task is the T, action is the A, and the R is the result. So you kind of want to like tell a story how it, what how it began with the situation, what you were tasked to do. So what 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 did like your boss tell you to do, and how you set about doing it, and then the action is what you actually did, and the result is like did you learn anything from it? Did you what was the end result? Did you sell the company? Did you finish the project or something like that? You you want to tell a good story. Like a good story teller is a good interviewee. And that's how you can really get a job. So then, let me tell you a story. So I read a book a couple years ago relating to this. It was called How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a pretty like popular book, I'd say. And I, I read it because I I was pretty poorly sociable. Like I didn't I wasn't very good at talking to people. And then so this book really helped me like to interact with people and really helped me understand that people care about themselves first before anyone else most of the time, anyways. So it becomes a win-win situation if you try to help them out. So try to help the interviewer out, and help make a win-win situation between you and the interviewer. So I would really recommend reading this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, because it kind of really helped me to befriend and like influence people around me. And I'm not talking about like manipulation. I'm just talking about like being nice, genuinely nice, and like a like a, a good person to hang around with and. It will definitely help you in like an interview. So a core concept of the book is that if you care about other people, they have a tendency to care about you in return. It it kind of makes sense, and that's what like the book kind of try to sell to you is that being nice is good, good for the world. It'll make the world better. So how this might relate relate to an interview is that by showing that what you can do for the company instead of、um, what the company can do for you. And so you can get the job in the end. So at the end of the day, behavior questions tend to be almost as important, if not more important, than the technical side. They want to know: Can you solve the technical problems? Can you write this code? Do you know that data structures and algorithms? Do you know AWS or stuff like that? They want to know that, that kind of stuff. But they also want to know if you're a good fit for the team. And depending on the company, this can be more important than. The technical side, so you can prepare your stories about your past. That's very important. I would recommend writing them down because writing them down will help you remember them. When it comes time that you during the interview, you're not gonna remember stuff very well because you're gonna be. It's the heat of the moment, and that heat of the moment tends to make people forget about stuff and make them nervous. It's kind of like when you're on stage, you're not gonna remember the joke to tell or something like that. So you want to make sure you like. Remember them very well. Maybe, like I said, stay them in front of a mirror. That's very important, and kind of come up with key like answers and stories for stuff like your conflicts, like your leadership. When have you taken leadership or some, over something?、Um, your judgment calls. When have you made like a call to do something or not? And it, it might be hard to come up with stories if you don't like have any like proper experience. Because I would recommend coming up with stories with like previous, like your previous job experience. And if you don't have that, maybe、um, I'm sure you've worked on a team before or something like that in college. And if not, maybe I don't know, make up your own story. Like it's, I guess, if you truly embrace the story, then it they might believe it potentially. But I wouldn't recommend lying. So a good start is to look at the job description of the job and look at the soft skills that they're looking for. Like, oh, they're looking for a good team player, so or something like that. And then try to come up with a past story that demonstrates each of the soft skills. So, for example, if they're saying they're looking for a team player, like come up with a story of how you were like an integral portion of a, a part of the team, and you tried to help everyone out on the team, but they didn't try to help you out. They weren't team players, but you were the team player. No matter how much 
the other people were not team players. Don't ever, don't ever put the blame on anyone else because that will be look bad towards the, the interviewer. You always want to say like it was your fault, and then like you say that you like you'll improve upon it and that you learn blah 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 blah. Okay. So another example would be like they would say like innovation is highly recommended to have for this job. So you might be you might see that in the job description. So you might come up with a story of a time like when your company and or your team um, was having trouble, they weren't meeting their deadlines or doom or something like that. So you created some innovation thing that routed the company or the team right on track, and they got the deadline or something like that, and the, they pushed to production and now everyone uses this cool thing. It's called Google search engine or something like that. So of course the behavioral part of the interview is only half the battle for many jobs, such as like if you want to get a job as a software engineer or solution architect. So you need to know the te technical aspects as well, which I have made many videos on. So check them out. And anyways, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to you later. Peace.